have just been giving this computer information about an aeroplane by means of an invention which is going to change computer technology. The difficulty has been that each new computer is more complex and more speedy than the previous one. And we've now arrived at a point where it takes far longer to ask a question than it does for the computer to work out all the possible answers. And this is absurd. For instance, if I wanted to tell the computer about this aeroplane, I would in the past have had to feed it with all the thousands and thousands of separate pieces of information contained in this vast mass of computer punch tape. But now, the computer is no longer blind. It can see the aeroplane as I can see it. We have given the computer an eye, this screen. Just to give the computer an eye may seem to be a comparatively simple innovation, but we do tend to take our eyes for granted. Vision, in fact, is very important. By just looking at something such as this simple wedge, we can get an enormous amount of information about its size, its shape, and the relationship of its various parts to each other. Now, it would take pages and pages of writing to describe this in accurate detail to somebody else, and it would take yards and yards of punched tape to tell the computer about it. But with this invention, that is no longer necessary. All I do is show this to the computer, and I can do that by drawing a simple diagram of it on this phosphorescent screen. I do it with a light pen, which I hold against the screen and mark, first of all, a spot. We start telling the computer about the wedge by drawing it from one perspective. First of all, a vertical line. The light pen follows the cross on the screen. Wherever I move the pen, the line follows. First of all, a triangle. Now that's one side of the wedge. Now by pressing a button, I can rotate this triangle through 90 degrees until we have another perspective. I draw another line, mark a spot, and a second line, mark a third spot, and a third line. We now have the wedge being seen from the second perspective. Let's connect up the remaining spots, a line, another line, and a third line at the bottom. And we now have the wedge completely drawn in the two perspectives. And if I press the buttons on the computer, I can rotate the wedge through any number of different perspectives. This shows us that the computer understands exactly what I've been trying to tell it, and it can show me this wedge in any one of thousands of different ways. It can do other things by means of these controls. It can contract the size of the object. I can instruct the computer with the light pen on the contract sign to make the image smaller, like this. Or, by pointing it at the expand sign, I can make the image larger. It's also possible to change the image in a number of ways. If using the light pen, I mark one spot, one corner, like this, I can expand and bend and change the shape in practically any possible way. This is a very useful tool for the designer because it means that he and the computer can work together hand in hand. Every change the designer makes will automatically be communicated to the computer. There are many possible applications of the graphic computer, but one of these seems certain to be an industry. If I wanted, for instance, to produce thousands of wedges just like this, all I need to do is to tell the computer what the wedge looks like, this is by drawing a diagram of it on the screen. I then tell the computer what size and specifications I need by typing these out on an information typewriter attached to the computer. And then the computer will produce a punch tape containing all this information. Now, this tape can be sent to any other computer anywhere else in the world and will be readily understood. It can, for instance, be sent to a computer which operates a numerically controlled machine tool. And that machine tool could turn out the required thousands of this simple object. Factory computers with working hands will now have a direct link to a planning computer with an eye. And so yet another human function falls by the wayside. This invention clearly adds a whole new dimension to the capabilities of computers. With it, they will be able to take over even more of our everyday routine activities. 
But no matter how sophisticated computers become, we must remember that it is still we who are the masters and they the servants.